Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. The villas at Kenny's house. Welcome home. With ammo, kind of scarce and expensive, some people are not shooting. Some people are shooting how they would normally shoot and maxing out all their credit cards and taking out a second mortgage. Really smart decision, young man. We can put that check in a money market mutual fund. Then we'll reinvest the earnings into foreign currency accounts with compounding interest and it's gone. And then there's people in the middle who are kind of buying ammo and kind of shooting, but not as often as they want to and with lower round count drills. So I see a lot of people doing videos on low round count drills and I'm gonna share some of the stuff that I do to semi stay proficient. I will say that it does suck doing lower round count drills and running out of ammo or not running full magazine capacity for drills when you were really used to it is very unfortunate because if you ever get into a self defense situation and you're using like your combat loadout or your what concealed carry law or whatever, you're not operating hopefully on one R one drills or anything like that. Let me go down the list of drills. First, one R one. Now you can do one R one with a rifle or a pistol and its job is to get an accurate hit under stress kind of that first shot and then reload quickly and then get another shot on target hopefully in an A zone. Now I'm not going to really have any cool A zone targets to show you because half the time I go to the range I go to it's quick set up get the get the thing and I don't have all these cool targets which I'm working on so don't get too upset with me. I'm going to get some 1x3s and do some stuff or 2x4s whatever so I can start actually doing something meaningful. But if you have steel targets with a pistol or even a rifle, doing 1R1 is a very, very good drill, very low round count, and you can load up a bunch of magazines with one round and do 1R1. So sticking with rifle slash rifle pistol, you have your two go to bolt lock, transition two, holster, bring the rifle back up, reload two. Now that does a couple things for you. Uh, it teaches you how to feel bolt lock and transition quickly because transitioning to a pistol is faster than reloading. Now pull out your sidearm. Remember, switching to your pistol is always faster than reloading. <laughs> and then, you know, get your rifle back in the fight and start engaging again, which is nice. And it also helps you with the trigger differences and grip differences between a primary and a secondary, which is stellar. Before we move off the rifle, there's two drills I do with the rifle. There's five shots in under a second transition to your pistol in five shots. Then there's also the six shots in under a second. And then there's the two, two, four, two, two drill I like to do. Or you could also substitute that for the El Presidente drill to cut that round count down with three targets. So two, 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 reload, two, two, two. And that's also good for the pistol. Moving to the pistol, you can also do draw two shots. That's a cadence drill. You get two shots well placed in a relatively fast amount of time. I usually use a two second part time because you have a draw in there. You can also draw, do four shots or draw two, reload two. Very nice, clean drill, low round count, helps fundamentals. Reloads are key and the more reloads you do, the better you are at reloads and honestly that's when you're most vulnerable. I also do 5R5. Now this drill has two variations. There's one where you draw and you waste $5 because you think you're as cool as some of these Instagram hoes and you're trying to be like them. And then you reload and do the drill properly and cleanly afterwards and you get five shots on target. That's a cool drill, except it's a big waste of money. So try not to do that one and be a retard like me. You suck. Then there's 5R5, which is five shots on a target, reload, five more shots. I did a uh, video on loadout math based on how many threats a magazine can reasonably process. And I don't like it as much, so I'm gonna try to redo it again. So I'm doing these videos out of order, but <laughs> it's hard to get that well executed in a short amount of time and it it's, 
keeps people's attention. Like I get bored listening to myself editing videos. <laughs> but I digress. And then there's also a really cool drill you can run because a lot of ammo quality is coming down. It's draw, uh, shoot, and have a catastrophic ammunition failure that locks up your gun. Run back to the bench, put your front sight on something, eject it, and then see if you can recover quickly by running a clean drill right after. That one was my favorite too. <laughs> I think it has to do with these chambers. It'll be something I cover when I get to the review of this. But a, a good standard for pistol, and a lot of these drills at the range I go to, I run at a minimum of 12 to 15 yards. Most of these drills, like the fast drill, which is another great drill, it's two rounds, reload, four rounds. It's a really, really good drill. Dot torture is also really good, but not as low round count. And the bear drill is really, really good. I really like the bear drill, but you can really master that if you just do it all day. And it's 13 rounds for the bear drill. So it's five, five, reload, three slow. So five as fast as you can go, transition to the next target, five as fast as you can go, reload, three more shots, nice and clean on the bear. And there's a part time, which I forget. So there's a lot of good drills out there that you can run. And a lot of guys don't run drills. They don't do any holster work. Their quote unquote training is just going to the range and pressing the trigger as much as possible and hearing dings on steel or, or shooting a shotgun pattern target with a pistol. I definitely encourage picking up some of these drills and running them so at least you get something out of it. So even though I'm not really using proper targets in some of these drills, I'm still getting the fundamentals of seeing the hit go through the paper, reloading, and then hitting it again. And there are times I miss, and there's plenty of times I suck, but then I clean it up. Running drills is important. Maintaining your proficiency, regardless of what's going on in the world, is important. All of these drills can also be run in banned states. There's not a single drill that I brought up that your 10 round limit will prevent you from doing. And if you have a limited capacity magazine in the first place, you should absolutely be doing these drills because reloads are key. So if you're behind enemy lines and you're not running drills, you're doing yourself a massive disservice because you have to do more with less. And the crime in those banned states, Massachusetts, New York, Illinois, Minnesota, all these places, California, you know, Washington State, all these places that are put in, like, just keep stacking gun laws because they, they feel like they can and it's not going to come back on them. And they're also defunding the police and crime is going through the roof. Those dudes aren't following the laws. So if you're going to be a law abiding citizen and you need to protect yourself, you better be an ace with reloads and shot placement better be your mantra. So because there's going to be times where you can't get a clean shot and you have to take what you can. So reloading is key and tactics are going to be key and just not getting into altercations and engagements is going to be even more key. So I'm going to get into that in a later video, but run drills, do your due diligence, keep shooting. All right. I know it's expensive and I know it hurts. I can't tell you how many times my PP has been soft because I'm I'm spending more money than I should on ammo. What the fuck are you doing? That crazy dancing making my penis soft. And I'm using ammo that I said I'm not going to use because I need to hold on to it just in case. A lot of my just in case ammo is getting shot too. It's just a lot slower. But I've heard a menagerie of excuses like, oh, I can't get 124. Lies. Oh, I can't get this lies. You just don't want to pay for it, which I also understand. So I'm not, you know, upset with people. It's just, just say that don't, don't bullshit people about why you're not out there. This stuff does matter. Keep shooting. These low round count drills in the future will help people with proficiency and reloads and all sorts of other important things. So definitely run them. Transition drills are key. And one last thing, I'm gonna hit this again in another video, but if you're doing a rifle transition, don't throw it around your body, okay? There's so many people that do that. And I know we train it out of people because it's throwing your gun behind you and all sorts of other stuff, so we don't do that. We kind of just like bring it down to our opposite hip almost. So it prevents you from getting hit in the dick, but you're also not throwing it around your body <laughs> and muzzling your team. So. When you're doing a transition drill, 
pull your fire hand off and go for the pistol as you're bringing the bringing the gun down. All right, but all that aside, run these drills, be proficient, keep working, and don't let this stuff stop you. Things are gonna get better, and if you train, things are gonna get better, and you're gonna be more proficient when they are better. So you'll be able to use ammunition more smartly. Every time you go to the range, you're getting economy out of it, and you're becoming the weapon, as they say. Thanks for watching. Take care out there. Oh, one more thing. If you have a double single, practice in double action, please. The lack of ammunition is not an excuse for your lack of proficiency. <laughs> okay, so get good in using double action. I know this one's cheating, and a lot of other guns are cheating. So I get it. But definitely run your double actions. All right, see you around.